super, I was on a super high, you know. Down in the mail room, and someone found it. So, anyway, I guess better late than never. <laughs> it is online. Um, yeah, yeah. So, from our website, there's a uh, there's kind of a searchable web version, and then there's a PDF version. By
Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have the final say on any issues before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those wishing to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak clearly into the microphone. Each side, those wishing to speak in favor of an item and those wishing to speak in opposition to an item have 10 minutes to present each side. The time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. If you are here opposing the rezoning tonight, you should be aware of what's called a protest petition. A protest petition can be very helpful to those residents who live in the rezoning area. Please consult the plan department staff for any details on the protest petition and they will be happy to help you. You should also keep in constant touch with the planning department as to when your case will go before the elected officials for a final vote. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Can we have a roll call? Commissioner Beelan? Commissioner Board? Commissioner Davis? Commissioner Gibbs? Vice Chair Harris? Present. Chair Jones? Present. Commissioner Huff? Commissioner Lamb? Present. Commissioner Paget? Present. Commissioner Smusky? Present. Commissioner Walters? Here. Commissioner Whitley? Here. We have excused absences from Commissioner Beechwood and Commissioner Winders. All right. And Commissioner Huff emailed me today also. We can add that to the uh, minutes. All right. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Good evening, Commissioners. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, we do have one adjustment to the agenda, item 7A, which was a resolution in honor of uh, former Commissioner Teji Kimball. Uh, we'd ask that that be referred back to staff and we will reschedule it for November. Commissioner, uh, former Commissioner Kimball called us today and indicated that he had a conflict with this evening's uh, meeting. All right, thank you. Thank you. Also, if I might quickly um, certify for the record that uh, all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with the provisions of law and we have affidavits to that effect on, on file with the department. All right, thank you, sir. Can we get approval of the minutes? So moved. been moved and properly second. All those in favor of, of the approval of minutes, let it be known by raising your right hand. Minutes has been passed 11 to 0. All right, thank you. We'll move down to item 5, public hearing for plan amendment, Murrayfield Commercial, case A120015 and zoning case Z120026. Good evening, I'm Laura Woods with the Durham City County Planning Department. I'll be presenting the plan amendment. Muirfield Commercial Plan Amendment Case. A12-0015. This proposal by Horvath Associates would change the future land use on 1.85 acres in North Durham from low density residential to commercial. This is within the suburban tier. The site is located east of Guess Road, north of Horton Road, and south of Victory Boulevard. To the north is a place of worship and low density residential. To the east, low medium density residential. To the west, vacant. And to the southwest, medium density residential. To the south is commercial. According to the applicant, and this is the most crucial point of the applicant's justification, the proposed flume change is consistent with the existing zoning on the property 
it would remain so uh, should you approve the rezoning request that is associated with this plan amendment. There are four criteria that staff use to evaluate these reports. Is the proposed land use consistent with adopted plans and policies? Is the proposed land use compatible with land use patterns existing in future? Does the proposed land use create substantial adverse impacts? And is the site of adequate size and shape to accommodate the proposed land use? Staff has reviewed the proposal and concluded it is consistent, it is compatible, it does not create substantial adverse impact, and it is of adequate shape and size. Therefore, staff recommends approval. That concludes my report. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department presenting the zoning map change report for Z1200026, Muirfield Commercial. The applicant is Horvath Associates. It is within the city's jurisdiction and the request is to change the existing zoning from commercial neighborhood with the development plan to the same district, although modifying the development plan and removing it from its current um, uh, uh, development plan, which includes a larger area. The area is 2.95 acres and the proposal is for 8,000 square feet of non-residential development. The site again is at 1439 Victory Boulevard uh, with frontage on Guest Road, south of Prison Camp Road and north of Horton. It is in the suburban tier. It is in the Eno B Watershed Protection Overlay District. And uh, just as a note, uh, this site is larger than the plan amendment site because um, the plan amendment just proposes to change the uh, northern portion of the site. The recreation and open space designation will remain the same. The request does satisfy the minimum standards of the commercial neighborhood district as shown here. The existing site is part of a larger development plan, PO320, uh, PO327, uh, you'll see here that it's proposed for, um, uh, well, the pattern shows a residential development. It is pr proposed for residential use. And uh, on this particular map, north is uh, towards the top of the screen. And so the site here is just a portion of that existing zoning district. Removing this uh, parcel does not change, uh, impact any of the commitments of the existing plan. And the proposal shown here with north to the left of the screen uh, is the site. There's a number of commitments on this site. It does show a building area here, which is a little bit more specific than we typically would see with parking along the frontage of uh, Guest Road and Victory Boulevard. What this request proposes to do, the existing plan had two access points that would cross this stream. This plan shows one access point here. There are a number of things that have changed um, as well. The proposal is also increasing the intensity of the site by 3,000 square feet. And there's um, some modifications um, of, of the use uh, outlined in your staff report. But uh, essentially, um, it will be uh, commercial and or office with some limitations to that. Uh, the, again, 8,000 square feet of commercial building area, one site access. Uh, the impervious surface maximum is less than 20%. This isn't a watershed protection overlay, which would allow 70% um, for, for reference. Tree preservation uh, is 13.07%. Uh, the graphic commitments are access points. The tree preservation areas, uh, a trail easement, which is off-site, uh, which is on the existing development plan for the, for the parcel, and there's a committed uses for office and or retail and or restaurant without a drive up window. And the eastern project boundary, which is where the existing access points would be, um, they're proposing to do an on and off site project boundary buffer there. So a number of text commitments. Um, again, uh, location of the building with specification of parking areas. Uh, intensity of the site and the prohibited uses are daycare, bars, night 
nightclubs, gas, gasoline pumps, or restaurants with drive through windows, and the stream buffers are committed to be undisturbed. Dumpsters facing uh, uh, commitment, loading docks not permitted, uh, air ventilation restrictions, and a finished floor elevation restriction. There's uh, design commitments associated with this request. I won't read it all, but they do address the architectural style, roof lines, ma building materials, and any architectural features uh, of any proposed building. The request, again, is not consistent with the future land use map. Uh, you heard that report. It is requested to match the present and proposed uh, zoning designation of the site of commercial. And it does satisfy the policies or meet the policies that of the comprehensive plan that apply to the site and staff determines that should the plan amendment be approved, this request uh, would be consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you. We have two people signed up to speak, uh, Ron Horvath and Janice Mitchell. Each one of you will have five minutes each. Chairman Jones, members of the commission, Ron Horbath, Horbath Associates, and I'll stand back from this a little bit, sorry. Uh, I'll be very brief tonight. The request is really, the, the main focus is the deletion of two driveways across the stream and enter the residential street to the east. That was the original concept the developer had at the time. Uh, unfortunately, during the 2005, six, seven, and later recession, the developer lost the property. Lennar Homes took over the, bought the townhome portion from the bank, and another developer picked up the commercial portion. And it was pretty much agreed upon that running commercial traffic through the residential development was not highly desirable. So we, he opted to allow me to bring the rezoning forward to have a single driveway access on the victory and leave the complete 100 foot buffer behind uh, the stream to buffer the uh, neighborhood from the uses. Uh, that is the main reason tonight. We did add uh, daycare to a list of exclusions over the other exclusions that we had in 2003. One of the reasons where the land use uh, amendment is before you is in 2003 with a zoning change, we didn't require or the city didn't require uh, land use plan amendments to be upgraded. So the zoning was changed to the neighborhood commercial and now when I come back again we had to now go through the land amendment change just to keep everything concurrent. That occurred I believe 2005, four or five when that policy changed. Be glad to answer any questions you might have and I appreciate your endorsement of this project. Thank you. Hello, my name is Janice Mitchell and I am a resident at Murfield Village. Uh, I, my home is directly next to where this property, commercial property is. Um, when, when our uh, former developer foreclosed on the property, all of the homeowners we met and we learned that this property was gonna come out onto Nicholas Drive. Nicholas Drive is a part of our community and we really didn't want that. So we were actually pleased when Mr. Horvath also did not want it coming into the residence. Because we have so many houses now, it's gonna be 96 houses. That's a main street. So in order for all that traffic to come down that street and a commercial property to come out onto that street, it would be too much congestion right there near the corner. So um, I'm in favor of this zoning proposal. Um, and also, Mr. Horvath has told me that nothing has changed in the plan since uh, he proposed this plan. So we met with him on several occasions to make sure that the plan fit with what our residents wanted to be like. Um, also, um, I was happy to learn that the stream, there's a stream that comes through that property and I just heard the young lady said that that stream is not gonna be disturbed because my house is in the floodplain, 
And so if that stream is disturbed, it's gonna, it could possibly impact all the houses on that side. So um, I'm in favor of it, as long as, like I said, that stream, she said it wasn't gonna be the street. Hopefully you can make that zoning um, uh, decision to make that come out onto Victory Boulevard. And then our community was really pleased with the plan. Thank you. We don't have anyone signed up to speak in opposition of it, so I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do we have anyone signed up to speak? Mr. Smutsky. Uh, this question is for planning. Uh, in, in other cases, we've had uh, locations that have had two points of ingress and egress. Uh, what's, what's the decision with this one having only a single? Uh, Bill Judge with transportation um, believe that goes back to the original uh, development plan that just had the single point of access for the public public street um, so far as overall to guest road um, their ordinance allows up to a maximum of 90 uh, units of residential development on a single point of access to guest road um, so so they would the townhome portions limited to that but so far as the retail portion changing the two access points across the creek to a single it's been reviewed by ncdot and the the city and determined to be adequate for that size retail okay the the reason i ask is that in the original plan it did have other access that would that would have come off nicholas drive so it would have had the two points the so. retail component would have had two access points across the creek to Nicholas Drive. Under the proposed plan, it'll be a single to, I'm drawing a blank on the name of that road that connects to gas, but victory, yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Horvath, do you want to? David, I might be able to help a little bit. The reason there were two points of access, it was going to be a, a circular drive that served the community as well. One of the intents intended development possibilities back there was a retirement community and they wanted to be able to have golf carts and stuff come through and travel and ease of access for the residents with the collapse or uh, of that developer and this turning into a full townhome project with a separate commercial that was no longer needed but that's why we had two points of access i'd love to have a second point on guest road but neither NCDOT or the city will allow that to happen. So one is adequate for this development. Okay, I, I, I'll just express the general concern about yeah. safety on, on the single point. If no one else has signed up or wants to speak, we can have a motion. Mr. Chair, I move approval of uh, plan amendment A1200015. Second. All right, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it, by, let it be known by raising your right hand. Motion has passed 11 to 0. Okay. And Mr. Chair, I move approval of zoning map change A130006. Okay. Two, two six. Okay, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. The motion is carried 11 to 0. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll move down to item 5B, page part 2, plan amendment case A130006 and zoning case Z130006. 017. Good evening again. Laura Woods with the Durham City County Planning Department. Case A13000006, page part two. This is in East Durham. It is in the suburban tier. It's approximately 10 acres, and the applicant, Lenar Carolinas, 
proposes to change the future land use from office to medium density residential. The property to the north is low medium density residential and vacant to the west, vacant to the south and east, also vacant. According to the applicant, the proposed designation would address an increasing demand for medium and high density residential land in Durham County. The applicant also states that medium density residential would represent a reasonable transition between the low medium density residential to the north of the site and office uses further south from the site. Again, here are the four criterias criteria that plan, uh, planning staff used to evaluate the proposal. Is the proposed unit, is the proposed proposal consistent with adopted plans and policies? Is the proposed land use compatible with land use patterns existing in future? Does the proposed land use create substantial adverse impact? And is the site of adequate shape and size in each case? Staff has answered that the proposed land use is consistent. The land use is compatible. The proposed land use does not create substantial adverse impact and the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed land use. Therefore, staff's proposal, uh, staff's recommendation is approval. That completes my staff report. Good evening, Amy Wolf again with the planning department and the companion zoning map change request Z1300017 is for Page Park 2. Um, the request is steward engineering, it's in the city's jurisdiction and the request is, is larger than the plan amendment area, uh, it includes uh, property to the west of the plan amendment area of residential suburban multifamily with a development plan and office institutional with a development plan to have it entirely zoned residential suburban multifamily with a development plan. The site area is 16.875 acres and it's for 124 residential units. It's located at 5310 and 5330 Jessup Street um, with frontage also on Crown Parkway which is uh, just north and west of Page Road. There's nine acres in the office institutional and about 7.7 .7 in the residential suburban multifamily currently. The existing zoning of the site, P0320 is the case number, uh, committed a mix of uses with a general uh, location and this OI portion was shown as office development, which is one of the reasons you're seeing this request for residential. The request does meet the minimum criteria for the residential suburban multifamily district. Here's the existing conditions on the site. Uh, it's been previously graded. You should see that in the aerial that's in your staff report. Um, it does have a natural heritage inventory on the western portion of the site, Stirrup, Iron Creek, Marsh, and Slows. However, the, the site has already been graded. I just want to point that out. Um, and no further disturbances proposed. Um, there's also a power line through the site. The proposal is shown here. It has a required uh, uh, building envelope and parking envelope. You'll see the access points on the Crown Parkway and a cul-de-sac and access at the end of Jessup Street. There's an undetermined number of site access through driveways along Jessup Street, the tree preservation area, and this committed natural buffer along the western portion, western boundary of the site, which is currently, um, there's currently trees existing there. Commitments include the number of residential units, 124, the site access points I pointed out, as well as the driveways along Jessup Street, maximum impervious surface of 70%, tree coverage at 23%, which also includes preservation and replacement areas. And there's a number of graphic commitments, access trees, uh, the internal ve vehicular private access will connect um, the access from Crown Parkway and uh, the cul-de-sac on Jessup Street, uh, including the construction of that cul-de-sac and then the buffer along the west, western portion of the site. 
There's a number of uh, traffic improvements that may be required of this development. I won't read through them. Um, they are in the staff report, um, and this will be determined at site plan. There are design commitments associated with the site, therefore allowing the site to be developed uh, as a multifamily, um, not committing to multifamily, um, but uh, the design commitments are required should that option be uh, utilized. Uh, address architectural styles, roof line materials, and architectural features. Again, the request is not consistent with the future land use map, therefore um, consideration of the plan amendment before you um, prior to uh, action on the zoning map change. The, the remainder of the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And we determine, staff determines, should the plan amendment be approved, this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the applicable policies and ordinances. And that is the end of this report. All right, thank you. We have one person signed up to speak, and it's uh, Mr. Robert, was it Shunk? Shunk, yep, Shunk, yes. You have uh, 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Chairman Jones and fellow commissioners. Uh, my name is Robert Shunk, I am with Stewart. I live at uh, 2627 University Drive here in Durham. Uh, I appreciate the staff's uh, staff report, and uh, I agree with their uh, comprehensive staff report completely. I would just like to highlight a couple of points and then make myself available for questions. Um, <coughs> as indi as uh, Amy indicated, the previous zoning for Page Park included 58 townhomes, uh, apartments, office, and retail. Uh, what we're proposing to do is, again, just rezone a portion of the existing townhomes and then the office area to all townhomes. Um, you know, due to market demands, additional townhomes in, in this area are necessary, and Lenar Homes would like to uh, expand the smaller townhome section to provide a little bit larger of a community. Um, the result of this change is, uh, is, is equivalent to providing 828 less trips uh, per day. And I'm available for any questions. Thank you. All right. We don't have anyone else signed up to speak, and I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do we have anyone up here that wants to comment? Commissioner Smokey. Mr. Shunk. Uh, do any of these new townhomes and the increased density, do they lend themselves to affordable housing? Uh, no, sir. That will be a market rate. Okay. And um, a question for Ms. Wolf. Ms. Wolf, can you remind me why uh, this sec uh, segment was left off its institutional? Was there a transition area or when? You know, we've we've reviewed this whole section before. Why was that left off? In, you know, the 2003 plan, the existing zoning. Okay. There was a on that existing zoning. This particular, the office institutional, is part of the larger site um, to the west and the south. And this particular portion is was designated for office building. And a commitment listed on that plan is for the general location of mix of uses and the location of those uses. Okay. All right, thanks. And on, on the diagram, uh, there's two, there's an entrance on Crown Parkway. Is that a road or? Uh, Crown Parkway? Uh, uh, yes. Crown Parkway is currently developed. It is a, a road. Um, there, there are two arrows and then there's a line. Does that indicate a proposed road? Through the it it's a it is not a public right of way. It is an access easement, for the uh, terminology of the city of Durham. So it's not a private street, uh, not a public road, but it'll act. I mean, to you and me and everybody else, it's going to act like a street, and okay. it'll be privately and then, maintained. And there's going to be uh, townhomes on either side of it. Yes, sir. Okay. And it's going to connect up with Jessup. That's correct. Essentially, Jessup goes down. Uh, Justice will currently a public right away. Uh, per reference guide of, for development from Public Works, a public street has to end in a cul-de-sac. So we're simply, you know, extending what to the layperson will be a street and looping back around the Crown Parkway. But you can get fire and emergency vehicles in on that road. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? If not, we'll uh, have a motion.
Chairman uh, Jones, I'll move approval of zoning uh, A1300006. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let me, let me know by saying, oh, well, raising your right hand. Wrong meeting, sorry. All right. The motion has passed 11 to 0. All right. All right. Mr. Chair, I move <clears throat> zoning case 130017. All right, thank you. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Let it be known by raising your right hand. Motion has passed 11 to 0. All right, thank you. All right. We'll move down to item 6A, which is a public hearing zoning map change request for Hope Valley Farms Pod, BB revision case Z130012. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department for our final zoning map change case. This case, again, is a change in the existing development plan that is uh, attached to the site. Case Z12, uh, excuse me, Z1300012 for Hope Valley Farms Pod BB revisions. The applicant is Greenberg Farrow. It's in the city's jurisdiction. Uh, Request is from Commercial General with a development plan to Commercial General with a development plan for 6.77 acres of non-residential development. The site is located in the suburban tier. It's not in a watershed protection overlay. It's at 1051 Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway between South Roxborough Street and Archdale Drive. Uh, the present designation was zoned uh, by case Z0900007. And there's a proposed change in that, that development plan by removing a commitment. I will go over those in more detail. Or, um, but essentially to um, remove a commitment to prohibit fuel sales. The request does meet the minimum standards of the commercial general district. The existing conditions on the site you'll see here it is already zoned commercial general with a development plan. There's floodway, floodway fringe, stream, wetlands, and a power line easement running through the site. And they are all demonstrated here. The proposed conditions of the site uh, show protection of those areas. Uh, you'll see the building and parking envelope and the uh, dark dashed line. And I'll go over the change in commitments of the existing uh, designation. Uh, this this uh, request is for between 1,000 and 20,000 square feet of building footprint, has the two site access points onto Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway, uh, impervious surface maximum of 70% with tree coverage at 10%. These are all on the existing plan. Uh, commitments are access point location, tree preservation areas, um, the opacity, there's a committed for a um, more dense buffer than would otherwise be required. Um, typically, it would be a 0.6 opacity buffer required. 24-inch heads, um, hedge along Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway and um, some grading to accommodate street lights. Uh, also, there are some graphic commitments with details at Site Drive 1 and Site Drive 2. These are on the existing plan. And there's a number of text commitments, and these also do are pulled from the existing plan about um, the opacity, uh, a transit facility along Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. There's uh, some stormwater mitigation. Uh, look up specifics about restaurant with drive-through, and um, uh, screening with a masonry wall, and uh, location of speaker boxes if there's a drive-through. There's also a number of improvements on, um, at, at the following locations at Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway and, and both site driveways. The commitments that were removed from the existing plan are um, conditions that have already been satisfied by recent development in the area. There are design commitments that address roof lines and building materials for any buildings. 
and the request is consistent with the future land use map and the applicable policies of the comprehensive plan and staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances thank you all right thank you we have two people sign up to speak Louis Sheik and Patrick Biker we have five minutes each Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission, my name is Lewis Cheek. I, along with Patrick Biker, represent Murphy Oil Corporation. We seek a rezoning of the 6.77 acres essentially across from the new Walmart on Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. While the property is already zoned commercial, we seek a change in the development plan. We wish to remove the committed element that there will be no fuel sales or convenience stores on the site. Murphy Oil proposes to put a convenience store and four islands with eight product dispensers on the property. Murphy Oil is an international company based in El Dorado, Arkansas. It is fully integrated, engaging in fuel exploration and drilling. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. It has 1,174 convenience store sites across the United States. 73 sites with over 500 employees are in North Carolina. This would be the first site in Durham. There would be seven to eight employees at the site. We estimate that the site would create $2 million in tax base. And of course, there would be associated sales tax generation. There will be a number of enhancements and improvements to make this development neighborhood friendly, which Mr. Biker will speak to you about. Traffic improvements will be constructed to mitigate the effects of a modest increase in traffic there will be no further median cuts in Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway as a result of the project. Staff has studied the project and have you have already heard has determined that the request is consistent with a comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances and we ask that you recommend approval of this zoning map change to the City Council. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Jones, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an, attorney in I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group here in Durham. I'm here tonight representing Murphy USA for this zoning map change uh, for 6.77 acres along the south side of Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway, directly across from an existing Walmart. I'd like to briefly introduce the rest of our team that's here tonight. In the front row, we have Mr. Wayne Gibson with Murphy USA, and then we have our Project engineers Hamilton Williams and Greg Sistrunk with Greenberg Faro, and then last but not least is our traffic engineer Earl Llewellyn with Kimberly Horn. In addition to the reasons given by my friend and co-counsel Lewis Cheek, I think there are a couple of important points that show we have accounted for potential neighborhood impacts with the development plan that's before you tonight. First, we will construct a 0.8 opacity buffer entirely within our property. To provide more detail on that committed element, a 0.8 opacity buffer means that for every 100 feet along our side and rear property lines, we will install about 8 to 10 canopy or ever, evergreen trees, 11 to 17 understory trees, and about 75 shrubs. To me, that's a lot of planting along 100 feet. We're talking, on average, about one shrub every 16 inches. As a result, there'll be plenty of screening along the property line back towards Hope Valley Farms. Second, based on Durham GIS, it appears that the closest residence to our project is approximately 500 feet away. That's more than one and a half football fields, and um, that's in addition to the 0.8 opacity buffer I just described. I happen to look at uh, my personal residence and figure out how far away I live from Nana's restaurant, and I'm actually closer to Nana's restaurant than the townhouses in Hope Valley Farms would be to Murphy Oil's uh, proposed convenience store. In addition, we have a committed element to ensure that the drive through facilities uh, have their speakers oriented away from the residential area to the, that's to the southeast of our development. One last point, the parcel that's before you tonight has been zoned commercial for the past four years. We now have a project that can implement this established zoning designation. We were pleased to host a neighborhood meeting about this project since there was a TIA required with the zoning map change. So we sent out 45 personalized letters to nearby property owners. Only two of those 45 people invited came to the meeting. We had a thorough discussion with them about the landscape buffer I just described in my comments. We did not perceive either of those two neighbors to be opposed to the convenience store we hope to build at this location. And so for all those reasons, we respectfully ask for your approval. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do we have anyone wishing to speak? Mr. Smutchkin. Mr. Biker. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. May, maybe I'm just not reading it. Mm -hmm. um, the the topo here mm -hmm. uh, and, and the the site mm -hmm. has a steep slope that goes down below the grade of the roadway. Is that is that going to be brought up to the roadway grade? Mm -hmm. it, yes. Okay, so it's all going to be graded at fairly level, correct? Okay, and then the, it's going to be out of the hundred-year floodplain. Absolutely, then. yes. We'll not be requesting a. I've had to request major special use permits for floodplain. <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> okay, and um, Commissioner Whitley knows that very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Certain McDonald's at Wellens Village was uh, uh, need to have that type of permit. We're not pursuing that, sir. Okay. And, and then there's going to be protections for the um, for the lower level that's left, right? Yes, sir. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No one else wishing to speak. Can we get a motion? I'll make the motion. Make the motion that we approve the. Uh, Turn your mic on. Yeah, there you go. Make the motion that we approve the zoning change of Z one three zero 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 one two. Removed and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Any opposition? No. Motion has passed 11 to 0. All right. Thank you. All right. Move down to item 7B. And uh, we'll have uh, Patrick Young administer the election of officers. <clears throat> Thank you, commissioners. Again, Pat Young. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, quickly, before I ask for uh, nominations for chair, I did want to uh, wrap up a piece of business from the last meeting. If you recall, um, there was some confusion about um, eligibility and length of terms. The interlocal agreement uh, stipulates that neither the city or the county shall have more than two consecutive terms uh, as chair or vice chair. And what we as staff uh, working in-house are recommending to you all that um, Mr. Jones' service filling the remainder of um, Mr. Mons' unexpired term would not count against either the city or county and essentially we start from zero. So either, board, any, either jurisdiction that's represented today could get two full terms. So that's what we recommend based on the interlocal and rules of procedure. So unless there's any objection to that, we'll assume that all members are eligible and whoever is elected whether it's city or county representatives could have two full terms. So I'll be happy to entertain any uh, nominations for chair for the coming year. Mr. Whitley. I move that we, um, that we keep the existing chair. Just nominate him. Okay. Uh, no second necessary for nominations. I have uh, Antonio Jones. Any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, I'd ask for uh, a vote on uh, another term for Mr. Jones as chair. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Ayes have it 11 to zero. Congratulations, Mr. Jones. All right. I'll Thank turn you. it back over to you for uh, uh, nominations and election of the vice chair. Okay. Can we get any uh, nominations for vice chair? Nominate vice chair David Harris. Second. No need for second. Do we have any other nominations for vice chair? All right. All those in favor of vice chair Harris, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Any opposers? Ayes have it. Congratulate vice chair. All right. So we'll move down to item 7C, which is any announcements. And what do we have for next month? Mr. Jones, we oh. have uh, four land use cases scheduled for next month. Okay. The the question is the election for the month of November is it's the fourth, isn't it? It's the first Tuesday. Yes. We did check 
uh, the at the beginning of the year we did check to see if the November Planning Commission would fall on the November election day and it did not we didn't take into account obviously the City Council primary but the regular election day would be, will not conflict with your next meeting okay thank you and mr. Uh, Gibbs you had a question or announcement now I'm on are, are we still broadcasting by the way okay good <laughs> y yes uh, that that's good oh, okay. I, I wanted to bring to everybody's attention uh, the board the Commission and well the staff already knows about this <clears throat> and any of those who can't find anything else better to watch uh, than a Commission meeting but it has to do with uh, and I'm sure you've all heard of the GSS, the grade separation studies that are ongoing and there are several places where you can uh, view these hard copy plans and I would, and one is in the transportation department in, in this building, uh, but it, it's uh, some proposals by the NCDOT and uh, along with uh, the Durham Traffic and Transportation Department. Uh, I would encourage everybody uh, to learn as much as they can and to uh, just be aware of once you see the plans and read about it, you will, you will become aware of the potential tremendous impact this is going, could make uh, from one end of town to the other. Uh, it doesn't mean that this is something that is going to happen, but they're asking for community input. And this is probably the backbone of, of our long range planning uh, is to get input from the public. Uh, there will be a a public comment section session at the city council meeting October 21st so that'll give you a deadline to work toward and I would strongly encourage everyone to uh, avail yourself of any opportunity to find out information uh, but that's the information uh, you mean about the GSS? Uh, the newspaper, the Durham newspaper, has uh, has published several things, uh, several articles, and if I may, I, I think you're going to help me out here. Yeah, right? We'll be happy to send you all a link to it because it is, yep. it is online through the transportation department, as Mr. Gibbs alluded right. to. Right, and and that link, as good as it is, I went up to the uh, transportation department here at the Durham. Uh, tra uh, traffic and transportation department you can't beat looking at those hard copies and being able to flip back and forth uh, but still that information that's online and, and I do appreciate you sending that link to everybody it's something that we really need to consider for the future because as I said it could have some major impacts on on the town thanks okay thank you any other announcements oh one more is it possible for us to get an updated roster with all of the appropriate information on it okay good thank you no other announcements no our hearts and minds are clear we go ahead and adjourn thank you <laughs>